Mr. Corsi here. I'm going to continue with the construction of these two Penrose tiles, the kite on the left, the dart on the right. And as suggested in part one of this video where we constructed these outline shapes, when we match edges in attempting to tile with them, there are constraints. These constraints are best shown by putting a geometrical pattern onto the tiles. And I'm going to use arcs of circles to do that. Now, unfortunately, in Inkscape, the circle tool, let's hover over that vertex, it, it detects it. If I hold the shift key down, the center of the circle will be there. If I now hold also control down, then we'll get a true circle, not an ellipse. And if I then drag, there's the circle. And you'll notice when it comes to the next vertex of the tile, it completely ignores it. It cannot detect that that vertex is there. So if we were to, um, we'd have to guess where that was. And that's not as accurate as it should be. So instead of using the circle tool, move down to the tool below it. Stars and Polygons tool. Use that instead. We don't need to press Shift or Control for this. Make sure that it's detected that cusp node. Drag out and it detects the other vertex. We want that to be a circle, but we'll leave it as a decagon just now. Now, if it isn't a decagon from you, for you, you should be changing that number to 10. So let's move that. Let's select it. And I want to move this so that its center is on this vertex. Now, over here on the snapping menu, snap centers of objects should be highlighted. So click and make sure that's grayed out. So that ensures that the center of this object can detect this vertex of the tile. So I'm now dragging the shape down. There's a bit of guesswork to look. There it is. That label object midpoint to cusp node. That label should appear. And when it does, let go and the object, the decagon, will snap so that its center is at the vertex of the tile. There's another one to do, and its centre is here. And we now have a node where we want it for the second circle. Select tool. Now, these are not circles. They're decagons. Let's change them to circles. So select them both. Select that one. Shift. Select the second one. They're objects just now, decagons. Under the Path menu, change these two objects to Paths. Nothing appears to happen. Let's go to the Node tool. Edit Paths by Nodes. We'll click on that. And it shows you all the nodes that make up these two decagons. We'll select them all. And we now want to change these nodes to become symmetric nodes. So make selected nodes symmetric. We now have our two circles. Back to the select tool. And there's the two circles that we want. Well, basically we don't want two circles. We're wanting arcs. We want to keep the arcs that are inside the tiles, not the external arcs. So I'm going to use this shape. Let's duplicate it. That's the tile shape. There is another one there now. Shift key using the arrows moves it up or down. So I've produced a duplicate on top of the original shape. I then want this circle to be cut by that duplicate shape. So under the path menu, cut path. And if you select that, move it, you'll see that it has indeed cut the circle. Let's delete the 
part we don't want. Let's do the same with this other circle. Now that spare copy, let's try and move that, that spare copy has gone. It disappears when you use the cut path command. So let's duplicate that again. Let's select the circle. Shift, select the duplicate tile shape and cut the path. You might as well check with the move the arrow, move the shape arrow keys and it certainly done the job so we get rid of that. So we now have the two circles that we want and I'll do the same over before we do the cosmetic job of colouring in and the correct sizes for the lines and so on to make the thing look a bit more presentable. We'll do the two circles that are required on the dart shape next. So the first decagon we'll create, centre there, dragging out to that vertex. And that gives us the node we need, which is there. Now that first decagon was just a guide, so we'll get rid of it. And the last circle, ultimately, we're going to produce is a decagon centre at this vertex of the dart tile out to this node. And these are the two circles that we want. So we select the decagons, holding the shift key down. Remember, they're objects, so we need to make them into paths. Take the node tools. The node tool, there are the nodes making up the two decagons. Let's select them all, still using the node tool, and change these nodes to symmetric nodes. There's a select tool again, and there's the circles we want. And again, we'll cut these using the shape of the tile, so duplicate that. So there's the larger circle selected. Shift, select the duplicate dart shape cut path. Check that that's worked. It has, so we can get rid of that. Again, let's do that with the smaller circle. So duplicate the dart shape, select the small circle, then select the duplicate dart shape, holding the shift down, and cut the path. Check that that's worked. It has, so delete that. So let's make these tiles look a bit prettier. Let's go to the object fill and stroke menu and let's put a fill in this first tile. So I'll select the shape, duplicate it, make sure the fill is on and let's choose purple and we'll choose a very light purple. I don't want any stroke so the outside disappears. I want that to be at the very base of the design so this lower selection to the bottom now we'll look at the outside of the shape, so we click on the outside, let's just check what we have, that's the outside one, you can see the fill with no stroke on it behind that. We want three pixels for the width and we'll retain the black colour. Let's do the one on the right, so outside shape, duplicate that, fill, and we'll use a darker purple for that. And no stroke, and let's move it to the bottom. 
let's click the outside shape just check that's correct there's the fill at the back and there's the outside uh, shape so that stroke should be three pixels wide now the arcs select that and also shift select the second one we can make these 10 pixels wide and let's make them red Brighter red than that, maybe. Looks quite good. Let's select the other two arcs and we'll make these green. So 10 pixels wide and some sort of brightish green. That looks good. Now you'll notice that the edges or the ends of these arcs are above the outside. So we choose the outside shape, bring it to the top, that raise selection to top. And we'll do the same for the one on the right. We'll raise that selection to the top. It'd be nice if the red arc was more prominent. It was above the green one. So just move it up one step not to the top otherwise it'll the ends will come above the edge black edges so up one there it is above the green do the same for the arc here up one step and that's them completed so one final move be select the kite tile control g group them so that's now one object and on the right the dark tile control G that's one object so when I select I'm selecting the whole of that shape same with this one so in part three of this series we'll attempt to tile we'll have fun attempting to tile with these two tiles so that's Mr. Corsi signing out Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in part three.